Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is my indie lab uh, on these crazy little things called Hallbach arrays. <coughs> so, what is a Hallbach array? Um, it is really just any array of like magnets. Um, they can be used for like uh, many different things, but I mean, really, there's like no limit. Well, I guess there is kind of a limit, but you can create all sorts of really crazy, weird magnetic fields just by putting magnets together in ways that you wouldn't understand. Mainly with my like experimentation, I dealt with this kind of Hallbach array, which is where you just alternate positive and or like the orientation of the poles. Um, this is like the more traditional Hallbach array. They were invented by this guy Klaus Hallbach, who you know was really smart. Um, so my experiment. Um, there's two parts. The first part, uh, I'll talk about the second part later, but the, the first part, I had this, um, I, I had it as a protractor, but I just used that because I could tape it easier. Um, I had this ruler here um, with the metric over here, and I would uh, set up my arrays like this so that like they lined up right with the line on the sensor that showed where um, like the sensor was actually sensing from and then you can see how the poles are arranged. And what I would do is I would uh, move the sensor along until it read a reading of exactly one uh, microtesla. And at that point, I would uh, carefully mark where it was. Um, I would, like it, it wouldn't be exactly like this because obviously like the sensor is over where I would be marking it, but uh, I would have it like a little bit off to the side and um, I just went from two magnets up to ten, and um, I was trying, what I really wanted to do, oh, yeah, sorry. What was it millitesla? Uh, millitesla, okay. yeah, I think so. Uh, my man, it was just see an M, and I think, um, uh, so, yeah, milli, millitesla. Thank you, Doc, for correcting me there. Um, I really wanted to test, I mean, obviously there's not even a lot to, to test with these. Uh, mathematically, I, I can't even really include a background um, because the equations for calculating the uh, the magnetism you you really would calculate the magnetism and not the magnetic field of these but even still the equations for the magnetism of these arrays are really like specialized like only specific arrays have equations for them um, and I couldn't find a generalized equation for that so I was just I just wanted to test a really like out of the box relationship like um, so I, I tested like the like the distance at which that field was one millitesla away from the central fringe because there's a like a node of magnetic field in between each of these magnets. So hmm. I would test that and I would put it versus the number of magnets in the array. And so the graph I got was like this. I played around with linearizing it and it turned out to be pretty dang linear uh, along like a negative square root relationship, uh, which I really did not expect at all. Uh, first of all, that meant, meant that like as more magnets were being added, not only was like the, I, I also want to be careful to note that I wasn't actually directly measuring the strength of the magnetic, magnetic field in the center of the ray, but I assume that I, like, I'm making the assumption that the measurement of the distance away from the mag the surface of the magnets at which the field was that strength is like cor correlates to the actual strength of the field, but it just meant that like the field strength was not only decreasing as I was adding more magnets to the array, but it was like decreasing more rapidly, which first of all doesn't make sense because eventually like it would just go past like the the array, so I don't know if it would just stop at zero or maybe if it would level out at some point. But like as far as I tested, it was a very even uh, correlation. Uh, and uh, like I said, I don't really have any uh, equations, so I couldn't relate that to an equation. But um, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, part two, I was screwing around, and I came across this really interesting graph because I, I wanted to see if I could map the shape of the magnetic field around one side of this array. And uh, I was really blown away when I got this graph because it almost perfectly sh shows directly the shape of the graph. What I did was I uh, moved 
the I, I like this was not real data. I was just moving my hand across the array, trying to keep it as steady as possible. But you can see like a beautiful symmetry here. This was with eight magnets together, and so you can see uh, like this perfect symmetry down the middle. And you can see like the right side is like a little bit smaller than the left side, but all like the same shape. And I think that's just because I probably moved my hand a little bit further back or something like that. Uh, so I decided I would test uh, the field strength at a given distance away from the array, like uh, at each node, you know, because like I said, there were like lumps around each array. Um, and so I got this graph. I chose, I chose to show the one with nine magnets. Uh, I did eight, nine, and ten for this experiment, but I, these graphs were the most pretty. Uh, I don't know why, but this first graph has a beautiful symmetry along like this line here, which I don't know why that would be. Also, I'd like I'd like to point out that. Um, oh, by the way, I don't really have any real mathematical analysis for this stuff because, like I said, I don't have any equations for these, and this. This doesn't even follow any kind of pattern at all. But this is just the absolute value of that graph because I wanted to see if it made any kind of shape. But you can see like this, because this has an odd number of magnets and the, the last one had an even number of magnets. So you remember that like the first two peaks were on the same side, right? Or the first and the last peak were on the same, like were both negative for the eight graph. But for the nine one, it goes like this. If I draw these peaks in here, So like you can see that it kind of like flips over. It's like rotationally symmetrical this time and not reflect like, uh, linearly symmetrical, which I thought was really cool just to see like the interesting difference between like an odd number of magnets and an even number of magnets. Um, I tried to linearize like just these values here, but they literally would not linearize. Uh, I tried like literally everything I could think of like trig functions. I tried doing like inverse hyperbolic trig, which is actually surprisingly easy to do. Um, like nothing would linearize that at all. Um, so I really was at a loss, so that's why I'm doing qualitative analysis. Quantitative analysis for that stuff. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to also take a second to like talk about other Halbach arrays that are much more interesting. The classic example of the Halbach array, it does have an equation for the field strength at, all, at the points uh, around it. Um, this is the, a representation of the array. Um, you have like poles going down, left, up, right, down, and like you basically on the top side of this like strip here, there's almost no magnetic field. It's it's very very weak. Um, and there is a there is like a, a, a mathematical expression that shows like this pattern going on infinitely. And if you like expand that pattern infinitely, there would be zero field on the other side. But obviously, since this is the real world, it has to end at some point. And um, this is almost exactly half or twice as strong um, as the field would be in if it was just like all poles facing the same direction. Um, and notice how the field like alternates sinusoidally between like positive and negative. I thought that was really cool. And then also, there's a lot of like really cool sinusoidal stuff going on here. So uh, this this number k is called like the like the wave number, like the like the linear wave number of like the system. And like that sounds really weird, but it just has to it just relates to like the way the magnets are rotated in relation to one another. So if you think of this as like two different systems of magnets, one of which is like this, and then the other one is like this, right? If you think about it, right, like if this is one bar magnet right here, right, this is going to have like field lines that go like this, and like um, <laughs> this. Right, and then... Use a different color. Okay, I'll use a different color. And I'll draw it over here. Um, and then this one 
is going to have field lines. This is a, a bar magnet here. This one is going to have field lines because like you can just think of these as two separate bar magnets almost because this one will have a field line that goes like this, right? And then it'll also have a field line that goes like this. And this one will have a field line going like this. And it'll also have a field line going like this. So notice on the top and on the bottom, these ones are facing opposite directions on this one, but they're facing the same directions on this one, right? And so if you think about it, these magnets are all rotated, rotated pi over two radians from these magnets, or 90 degrees. And so like, that's just what that K is. That K just says that these are pi over two apart. And so these fields on top cancel each other out because they're going the opposite direction from each other, but these fields on bottom add together. It's really simple, a lot more simple than you'd expect. And then, <laughs> this is another equation. This is for like cylindrical Halbach arrays. And again, and I, like, I'm not even gonna get into it. You have like all sorts of weird things going on. This rho, phi, this magnetism thing, which is like a weird relate, like a weird cousin of the magnetic field. Uh, but the important thing is this K, which is again, like just refers to like how much like the different sets of magnets are rotated to one, in comparison to one another, right? And so on this next slide, I have specifically these ones on the these ones on the bottom here, which are um, these circle ones, right? You'll notice that the first one has k equals one, right? Which would have like a bunch of zeros in that last equation. And notice how these are all like not like like they're not really rotated with towards each other with regards to like the circle, right? Then these ones are like a little bit rotated off of where they were there, but they're not like. 90 degrees rotated. They're rotated less than 90 degrees, and this creates like a completely perfectly uniform field in there, which is what this, or no, 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 that's actually what that shows. Um, but uh, it, it'll create a completely perfectly uniform field. No, I think it's two. Yeah, no, that, that is that is that. It, it cr creates the completely uniform field within it, and um, and then this one is perfectly 90 degrees, which creates just a stronger internal field. And as you just keep rotating these magnets more and more with relation to each other, because this is past 90 degrees now, and it's just an even stronger internal field with more breaks in it. And then also notice how the bottom arrow is like, like the top and bottom arrows are opposite on this one, then they're the same way on this one, then they're opposite on that one, then they're the same way on that one. And that just, op again, reinforces like the cyclical nature of this thing. And then there are all sorts of uses for the Halbach arrays. This is what a fridge magnet looks like. Um, basically these alternating poles with then these, these uh, extra magnets on the bottom. Is that why they don't stick backwards? So they don't stick backwards. They're Halbach arrays, uh, little Halbach arrays. And then this is used in like uh, quantum physics experiments. This wiggles uh, quantum particles um, because they, they use these Halbach arrays to like the design the shapes of the magnetic fields uh, really, really precisely and then they shoot electrons through them and wiggle the electrons exactly the way they want to. Um, and I thought that was really cool. They, they're, they're literally called Halbach Wigglers. Yes. Um, thoughts and conclusions. So, in conclusion, um, this is a really fun experiment. Um, I, tried to, I tried to do the experiment at first with the more complicated Halbach array, the one with like the 90 degree rotation within it, but um, it, I really experienced that 90 degree rotation because the magnets really don't want to stick together that way. That, that's like the worst possible way to try to stick uh, five magnets together. Like there's not a more difficult way to do it. Like mathematically, that is the most difficult way. And um, I was kindly borrowing Dr. Schuster's magnets and I didn't want to have to glue them together or anything. So um, I learned a lot. Magnets now. Thank you very much. So, do you want to tell us when you did your lab? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a few questions, but the hour's over. I'll ask you privately. Thank you.